So for this video, we are continuing on. This is video number two of a four part, I believe, playlist of all things bath melts. And I guess since we are talking about it quite a bit, not just exclusively bath melts, because we are giving a lot of time and attention to the formulation of massage bars, solid shower oils, all the things, solid lotion bars. So today is video number two, and we are taking the video and the recipe that we did for the first part of this, and we are modifying it. And I will tell you why we are modifying it and what I hope to get from said modification in just a minute. But before we do all of that, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for week nine of year three and video two of a full playlist deep dive on all things bath melts. Now, a bath melt, as we talked about in the first video, is meant to be a, an item, preferably small, usually between half an ounce and no more than two ounces that you drop into the tub, and it's meant to melt because of the heat of the water, moisturizing your skin in the process and, you know, not kill you with the slippery, you know, oil slick that may be left behind. For sure, that's definitely a bonus. And the recipe that we did yesterday is a recipe that contains an emulsifying wax and basically two butters, so a very firm butter and a softer butter. The inclusion of an emulsifying wax is a great idea because while it's not super necessary to keep the butters together, like that's not a needed addition, it will help with the dispersion of the oils in the tub, making it different than just say, putting together a coconut oil and an olive oil, or just taking some oil and putting it into your bath water. I'm sure we've all done that at some point in our lives and you see that there's sort of oil pools. So it will help with that. I am interested to see how much it helps with that though, when we do the tests, but because I want to ensure that my end user is going to get that nice dispersion of the oils, across the entirety of the tub and also have the almost immediate payoff of these oils melting properly and dispersing before they get bored of being in the bathtub, I wanted to modify this. So what I will be doing is I will be keeping the emulsifying wax in its same part, the firm butter in its same part, the shea butter in its same part. But I'm going to be adding a couple parts of baking soda and citric acid to help the dispersion. I also feel like it's going to help with the melt point as well as the overall stability of the bath melt itself. I keep wanting to say bath own because that's what I make, but these recipes can obviously be used in any container that you want to pour them in, for sure. So let's get to the video. We will look at the recipe that I came up with for this and we can talk about my thoughts and my crazy thought process behind all of that, you know, there. Okay, so essentially we are going to take the recipe from the last video, video one, and we are going to improve upon it. So we are going to be keeping the e-wax, the shea, and the cocoa in their same parts, and we're going to improve on that by adding some baking soda and some citric acid. Why do I want to add baking soda and citric acid? Well, for the reason being that I am actually A, concerned that this is going to be a very slow melter. The just the original with the e-wax, the cocoa butter, and the shea butter all together. I really don't think that bath temperatures get up that hot in order to melt this in any sort of time frame that you would want to realistically be in the bath. So the baking soda and the citric acid, essentially you're creating a mini bath bomb within a bath melt. Look, there's your recipe. And that will help with the actual dispersion of the oils themselves, breaking apart the entire cookie or the bath melt faster so 
it can melt easier. So this is my thinking, but I'm not going to go too crazy with it. So essentially I'm just going to add two parts of baking soda and one part of citric acid. Now, for the micas, normally in recipes that do not include an e-wax, you would want to add a poly 80 if you were going to be including micas within all of this. But because we are doing the e-wax, which already has poly 80, you know, inside of it, it's really not necessary. So there would be no need to include any poly 80 in this particular recipe. And of course, you're going to include your scent as the scent usage rates, you know, allow within all of that. So make sure you're using a nice skin safe scent and keeping it within the appropriate category for a bath product. Now, as you see, again, your most fine wax, ethyl alcohol and poly 60. Because you have the poly 60 in here, you're not going to need to, again, put in the extra poly 80 or what have you in with any of these liquid oils. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the baking soda and the citric acid together, mix them up really well, make sure all the big clumps are mixed up and, you know, essentially just pour the melted butters and waxes into it. And onto the pour of this, I am using essentially almond mixed with insert all kinds of other things here with this particular round and collection of batharones. So there's that. But you saw on the intro card there, the little title screen thing, separation. Separation is something that you probably will experience when you start messing with baking soda and citric acid in this amount of, you know, oils. And what I mean by separation is separation during the actual pouring, not separation for the finished product. That has never been the case. But the reason why you're experiencing that separation is for the same reason that, you know, baking soda and vinegar are such powerful cleaners in your, you know, everyday cleaning. Baking soda on its own, but especially baking soda mixed with an acid, really does a great job of breaking apart the particles within a fat or a grease or an oil which is why, I mean, you buy a brand new cook cooktop and it tells you, hey, you should put baking soda on it, cover it in vinegar, and that's how you clean your, you know, your glass cooktop. All of the things. And so that's what it's doing right now. The baking soda and citric acid are in there and it's combining with these oils and it's wanting to essentially break away from it. And so again, you're going to be experiencing the separation no matter what when you are dealing with a recipe like this but it again it's only during this particular pouring process the end result there's no separation and there's no concern about it falling out of solution so to speak because really technically speaking there's no solution to speak of and because there are so many butters and waxes in this particular recipe that are by nature on their regular state they are solid they're sort of just going to bind and reform around the baking soda and the citric acid sort of trapping that baking soda citric acid combination inside the actual bath melt, just waiting for water to release it and do all of the cool fizzy foam action. This is the reason why I think this is going to be a superior recipe to the one that we did in the first video. Because we are hiding the baking soda and the citric acid essentially inside these cool little bath melts, as soon as it touches water, that baking soda citric acid is going to start reacting much like a bath bomb and it's going to start breaking apart all of the oils, all of the butters, the fats that are within this, allowing for a more even distribution across the tub and also a faster distribution. So to that, that's really why I wanted to play with it with the actual citric acid and the baking soda included in the original recipe. But I gotta tell you, I am actually loving the pouring of this particular recipe. It's wildly easier than the recipe that I've been using for, I don't know, like eight, nine years. Okay, and on to the big reveal. And at first blush, I absolutely love these. They are absolutely beautiful. They're so smooth, they're so shiny, they're so easy to remove from the mold, which is honestly is not something that I experienced with my original bath melt recipe. I really love my bath melts because of their performance, but in all honesty, making them, kind of a stressful situation because I have copious amounts of baking soda and citric acid in my recipe, which you will see tomorrow, but it really makes that separation issue that you're dealing with when you first, you know, start the pour a lot more pronounced. And I really don't like that. This absolutely delightful. And in all honesty, if it performs nearly as well as my existing batharones, 
I may very well consider actually using these, you know, this recipe in my line. I'm concerned that it's not going to though. I am still concerned that it's going to be too long of a fizz or a melt rather, which is not something that I really want because again, when you have three solid butters and waxes that sit between 90 and 120 degrees for their melt point, I don't think that a standard bathtub is going to actually melt these down enough in the amount of time that you would typically spend in a bath. But I don't know. We're gonna see with the test, which we will do in video four. But so far, these are absolutely stunning and it was an absolute delight to pour them. No real problems with any of it. So, you know, let's take that for what it is. And there they are, the bath melts from the second recipe. So again, it's the first recipe, but I included just a little bit of baking soda and citric acid and kept the emulsifying wax. And as far as the pour goes, I really like it. As far as the overall look, the finished product, love it. Absolutely love it. It did expand a little bit because of the citric acid in there, which is something that you're always going to contend with when you have that baking soda and citric acid in anything, even if there's no water within the actual product, it's gonna be pulling from the humidity in the room. So that is a consideration for sure. That said, I also liked that it puffed up like that because it made the cookies a little bigger. It would have ultimately given some beautiful aeration inside of the cookie itself, which you can't see, but it would have allowed me to actually underfill those just a little bit and given the really beautiful feet on the bottoms of the cookies because of the swelling of the product. So for that, I really like this. I am very interested to see it in testing and see how it compares to the original recipe that I gave you in part one of this. We will be testing all of these in part four, but as far as I'm concerned, this is already a much better solution than just the straight e-wax and the two butters. The e-wax and the two butters, they don't look or feel intrinsically any different than a lotion bar. I would never put a lotion bar into my tub. So for first blush, this is what I would do for sure. We are going to do two more recipes with all of this. Well, essentially just a third recipe. And the fourth recipe will be what I have ultimately decided on with my bath melts and the recipe that I will be using, you know, for here on out until I decide to start playing with these again and maybe making some changes. So definitely like hit the bell and the subscribe and the all of the things, comments, help out with the algorithm. The videos are a lot of work, you know, and so it definitely helps me get in front of more people that might like this information and, you know, helps me out with my motivation to continue doing more of them. There's that. For the Sudzers, hey, thank you for existing and all of the things. And I know that you're gonna come back for tomorrow's videos where we're going to drop the next recipe and the fourth recipe and test all of these bad boys against each other and see which one we like better. But for now, I am out of here. Thank you again for being here, for existing, for spending part of your day with me. I will see you guys all again tomorrow for the final two videos in this playlist of all things bath, melt, and not at all soapy. Soapy fun. Bye.